Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We have a special service planned today with, with communion. It's an open table, and all are welcome to participate uh, in, in communion. If you would, take a second to sign the friendship pad so we, we have a record of our visitors who are here today and, and that you can, so that you can call each other by name. So um, a couple fun little things going on in the life of the church. Last week, we received a new member after worship. Jim Wilhelm uh, became a member of First Presbyterian Church. He had, uh, his wife had joined Valerie and was presented before the congregation, and Jim was traveling for work and was in Nebraska, and so last week we received him, and I forgot to mention that uh, last week in worship. So uh, welcome Jim Wilhelm when you see him, and again, he's out of town this week, so he, he's he's not here, but next time you see them. Um, and summer sacks, I heard that went great uh, in that uh, you, you got a bunch of kids fed. There's another summer sacks program on July 17th, so they need more folks to help with that. I think we do it three times in the summer. And also, you'll notice in your, uh, either in your bulletin or in your newsletter, or the ushers might have handed them out, there's a survey and yeah, it's on a yellow sheet of paper. It's the best survey ever. I try it out. There's only like 10 questions on there. And I, so it's just for me to get some answers from you. So instead of just asking each of you, I just figured I'd ask all of you at one time. And so if you would, please take a minute to fill out that survey. You can just leave it on the pews and we'll pick them up. And I'm going to try to get as many responses from that as we can. And it's just... One of the questions on there is about how would you, are there any recommendations for how we spend our, our mission dollars? And so we thought that uh, we would like to hear from you about recommendations for that instead of just trying to guess what you guys would like. So that way you have a say in how we're being stewards of the gifts that you've given us to give to others. And there are some other things on there about Bible study and stuff like that so that we can do some planning for you. So please take a minute to fill that out if you would. Um, are there other announcements this morning? Well, I, I have a special announcement. So I went to, to camp this past week, and I was there. So Camp, camp Wyoming, I, you know, when I told Kevin uh, Cullum, the camp director, yes, I'll go, I thought I was going to get a week of vacation. But it turns out they make you get up at like 7 in the morning, you have breakfast early, and then I do a morning devotion for the staff, and then I do a sermon every night for the kids, and I hike with them, and they hike you out to some cave somewhere, you do a Bible study, and then you hike back just in time for lunch, and then from lunch, you, uh, it was busy, but then in the middle, in the middle of the week, on Wednesday was my birthday, and look at that. I got stacks and stacks and stacks of cards. It was literally overwhelming. There were like 100 billion cards there <laughs> from you guys, from you guys. And that was just so awesome. Um, I, I actually got mad at you a little bit. I was like, you jerks. You really know how to make someone feel loved. That's just not fair. Uh, so, so you got me, and, and I don't get choked up about stuff, but I, I was feeling really special about it. Um, and, and apparently, you guys like bad jokes, because a lot of these cards were just... <laughs> so thanks. Thanks for that. All right. Any other announcements? Let us worship God. Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength, with all your strength. With all your soul and with all your 
sun and the moon and set the path of the planets. The waters and the trees and the fruits of the earth came forth from his voice. He redeemed our lives and gives hope beyond our understanding in times of need. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good.
means in Christ, God fashioned us together as a potter formed the clay. The Lord knit us together in our mother's womb. The Spirit knows every hair on our head and watches over us as we come and go through our lives. God knows our weaknesses and wants to turn them into strengths. Therefore, let us confess our broken ways to God. Let us pray. God, you are the author of life. You deserve respect, praise, and honor. We owe our lives to you. Yet we think of you only in passing. We desecrate your name. We take you for granted. Forgive us, God of compassion. Help us to love you with our whole heart, mind, and life. Amen. Let us continue to pray in silence. in a position to condemn only Christ and Christ died for us Christ rose for us Christ prays for us know that through Christ you are a new creation and you are forgiven friends believe this good news be seated and join me in prayer. God of every generation, by the wisdom of your word and the power of your spirit, help us to comprehend the height and depth and breadth and length of your great love for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The psalm lesson comes from Psalm 89, verses 1 through 8. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever with my mouth. I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. I declare that your steadfast love is established forever. Your faithfulness is as firm as the heavens. You said, I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to my servant David. I will establish your descendants forever and build your throne for all generations. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? A God feared in the council of the holy ones, a great and awesome above all that all are around him. O Lord of hosts, who is as mighty as you, O Lord? Your faithfulness surrounds you. The word of our Lord.
Sources confirmed Tuesday that local freethinker Jared Olson called into question the idea that God has ever done anything for him, all while inhaling oxygen and exhaling carbon dioxide. Diane has more on the story. Jared Olson attends Edmonds Community College, where we caught up with him while he was speaking to a gathered crowd about the need for, or lack thereof, God. This whole idea of God is just holding us all back. Olson said this as the membrane across his larynx vibrated to modulate the flow of air from his lungs, making his speech audible to the people listening. What's he done for you? What's he done for me? Nothing! As the people listened, their intricate air structures were instantly being transformed by the invisible sound waves into abstract thought in their brain's nervous tissue. Olson went on to pursue this line of reasoning further, claiming that, and I quote, Mankind has science, medicine, and mathematics to thank for its continued existence, rather than an all-powerful creator for which there is absolutely no evidence, end quote. According to eyewitnesses, he made these claims as the surface his feet rested on continued to spin around the Earth's core without any input from him, all while the only known habitable planet on which he stood rocketed around the center of the galaxy in perfect formation at the unfathomable rate of 490,000 miles per hour. Brady. Thanks, Diane. We understand Olson plans to detail religion's negative influence on society at a meeting next week, which is being held in the annex adjacent to both a Christian homeless shelter and a Catholic hospital. That's Marky! I thought that was a good one. So we've, we've been doing a, a three-week series on, on the greatest commandments taught by Jesus, to love God with our whole heart, our whole mind, and all of our lives. And, and another one is like it, to, to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And in the bulletin, there's the, the, the wrong scripture reading. It's the, the scripture for the week is 1 John 4, 16, which says, God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. Love God. Love others as yourself. Jesus once said the Christian faith was expressed in these two commandments. And we spend much of our lives dealing with the second principle, with loving others. We constantly find blessings and struggles in our relationships with people, with family, with friends, with co-workers, and teachers, and even strangers. We know what Jesus is talking about when he says to love others. We know what Jesus is talking about when he says to love your neighbors. I don't think we quite understood that when he was saying that, he meant people probably in the next room in our own house. But that's what he is talking about there too. And we know what it means to learn to try and practice the fruits of the faith in our most important relationships. To, to practice with the ones we love most, things like patience and kindness and humility and truthfulness and forgiveness and to put those things to work in our relationships because that's what a covenant relationship is about, is practicing those things because living together is hard. And we get that, and, and we've talked a lot about that uh, together in the time that we've spent together, and I'm sure over the course of your lives, you've heard a lot about what it means to love others. And we've talked as well about what it means to love ourselves and, and how sometimes when we feel like God's distance, God is distant, that, that's saying more about ourselves than it's saying ab about God, right? Perhaps we're, distance, we're distancing ourselves from God while God is still close and intimately desires a relationship with us. And so uh, we, we know that Jesus is saying that he wants us to love ourselves the way that God loves us, uh, the way a loving parent would see us. And he means seeing ourselves as, as a beloved child. And he thinks that we should offer ourselves the same kindness and patience and compassion uh, that God offers in the cross. And Jesus encourages everyone to 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 engage in that work of self-love and of love of others, to live with and value people and to live with and value ourselves. But Jesus says the first and greatest and most essential commandment in which a Christian engages is not this commandment to love others and to love ourselves, but the first and the greatest commandment is to receive and return God's love. 
the love that rises from the very center of all of creation, the pervading breath of life in the whole cosmos. That is what Jesus says is the first and greatest commandment, is to love that. But it's kind of hard to love something uh, that you can't see, that you can't touch, that you can't smell, and that you can't hear. So have you ever felt truly, truly loved? Like when you get 100 birthday cards in the mail from your, from your congregation? <laughs> but when you feel, feel truly, truly loved, all of a sudden, things kind of open up in the world, right? You're, you're a little less anxious. You're a little less irritable. You feel more creative, and, and you feel somewhat free. You're more generous. You want to share love with other people. You're more likely to go help someone, to help a homeless person, to, to give to someone else, or to, to sit down and listen, because, because you are in a place where you feel blessed. And, and with that, I, I think it's so important for us to be able to return that and to be able to, to offer that same love back to God. I mean, every human being wants and needs to be loved, right? And we can feel it when, when we're not. And anyone tells you otherwise, they're, they're not really being completely honest. And God knows that everybody needs that love too. And God is always drawing near to us, breaking in through the person of Christ, right? Sending the Holy Spirit as an advocate, as a counselor, whispering things to us to tell us to, to be blessed and to go and bless others. God is always breaking in to do those things, uh, not as someone who is, who is manipulating us, but someone who is persuading us to be, to be generous and to be kind. We have known and felt that love from God for a long time, and Christians have claimed uh, this love is almost like better than any romantic relationship that there could ever be because we found out that in romantic relationships, the romance doesn't always stay because apparently, like as we age, so do things on our bodies, so we end up spending half of our marriages listening to someone else sneeze or cough right or clear their throat before they say anything and and that it becomes it becomes difficult to live with someone else and and what what we learn is that uh, there is a better love there and and we have known and felt and been changed by this love from god but how do we respond to that we rarely talk about how do we love a God we can't see, who is silent, and who you can't touch. And I imagine that if we went around the room and started asking everyone, what is your concept of God? Right, we were going we're gonna to find out some pretty wacky things about everyone, right? So if I started going around and asking you, okay, so what is God? Right, no, what is God really? And, I, and if I said, okay, so I'm going to take off the pastor stuff, and we're going to sit like two people just sitting in a coffee shop or sitting over at, at the press box or, or two college students at the community college. And I want you to tell me what you think God is, what you truly think God is, not the Sunday school answer. And I imagine that you would come up with some pretty creative things, right? And I want to encourage you to explore those things with your mind because I promise you, there is nothing that you have thought about God that some saint somewhere else hasn't found uh, to, to say, listen, you're right. God is that and more. How do we return love to that? One of the ways that I've found in my personal life is through prayer. So, I think one of the biggest blessings I ever received was learning that prayer isn't something that I had to do like a five-year-old on my bedside. I, I didn't have to, prayer didn't have to be getting on your knees and, and folding your hands and saying a prayer. Uh, when I read the book, The Purpose Driven Life, he talked about breath prayers, uh, Rick Warren did. And there are things I loved in that book, things I, I didn't love about that book, but one of the things I loved was this concept of breath prayers. And he talked about how these breath prayers can be a way to center ourselves on on an awareness of God's love. And these things can happen any time, right? So walking through 
the parking lot going to Hy-Vee or going to Walmart when uh, the sun hits you just right and that breeze blows just right that you can do that breath prayer like thank you God just that awareness that returning uh, to God some gratitude um, and in another way you know prayer doesn't have to always be petitions it doesn't have to be thanking God for something but it can be taking that moment uh, just just to be quiet so I'm sure over this summer, some of you are going to be by a lake or by a pool somewhere, and there are going to be grandchildren playing or other people uh, boating and fishing. And when you have your feet, uh, if you dip your toes in that cool water to sit and think, like that cool water is the same waters of baptism that washed over Jesus, that washed over me, that claimed God's love for me, and to give thanks and to feel that coolness as a sense of God's love for you. That's another way to just give thanks and I think uh, other ways that we can show love back to God is with our actions right obviously God says whenever you do this to the least of these you do this to me so showing love to a friend to a spouse to a family member to a community organization those are ways to return gratitude back back to God and studying studying the word of God studying scriptures reading other people and, and that's one of the ways I'd love to find, find uh, meditations for, for God. So I found a couple here that I, that I just want to share with you real quick, a couple little scriptures. Um, so here's, here's a great one for, for moms, for all of us, really. Isaiah 49, can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? When I first read that, I was like, well, yeah, I've known some moms that are pretty much like, I mean, even with Hudson sometimes, I'm like, I love you so much, son, I'm going to strangle you. My goodness. You know, how can you go from loving someone so much like one second and like 30 seconds later, like, oh, my God. But it happens. And so we say, yeah, can, can a mother do that? Yeah. And, and, but God says, even these may forget. Even you who love your children so much may forget, yet I will never forget you. See, I have you inscribed on the palms of my hands, right? And you think about the cross and, the, and, and what Jesus did for us there. Or Paul says of God in Romans uh, 8.38, For I am convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor debt nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And to think about what that scripture means, but to actually put it back to the context, because one of the things we do at every single funeral sermon is we take out the part right before that that says we are being led like, like sheep before the, before the slaughter. We're being led like lambs to the slaughterhouse. And we take that part out because we just want to focus on this other part. But Paul was talking about some of the Christian communities that were being persecuted here. And he was saying, in the midst of that persecution, in the midst of the worst things going on in their lives, they still weren't separated from that love of God. So like the things like the cancers and the things like the Alzheimer's and the things like the, the pain and the things like the anxiety, those, those don't hold sway over that love of God. Like when we dwell in God's word, when we look at scriptural meditations, we find some place, uh, some places to actually say thanks to God for for being with us in in radical and unbelievable ways. And and one of the the last things that I like is. Um, to read other people. I think God, you know, we, we talk about the Bible as the canon of God's witness, but I think when I read other literature, I also find God, like, th th go read some James Joyce, and, and, and if you can understand what he's saying, sometimes you, you end up having an encounter with, with God in, in, in books and fiction and nonfiction, and Meister Eichhardt uh, shares this one little piece of poetry in one of his books, and he says, what keeps us alive, what allows us to endure? I think it's the hope of loving or being loved. I heard a fable about the sun going on a journey to find its source and how the moon wept without her lover's warm gaze. We weep when light does not reach our hearts. We wither like fields if someone close does not ring their kindness upon us. Raining kindness upon another, appreciating the sun and the moon and the stars, being aware of God's creation and that web of interconnectedness is a way of returning that thankfulness. Thomas Merton, 
the, the Catholic priest says, it's God's love that warms me in the sun and God's love that sends the cold rain. It's God's love that feeds me in the bread I eat and God's love that feeds me also by hunger and fasting. It is the love of God that sends the winter days when I'm cold and sick and the hot summer when I labor and my clothes are full of sweat. But it is God who breathes on me with light winds off the river and in the breezes out of the wood. His love spreads the shade of the sycamore over my head. It is God's love that speaks to me in the birds and streams, but also behind the clamor of the city. And all these things are seeds sent to me from God's will. I don't think that this isn't anything that you don't know about in, in your faith journey, in your life, about contemplating and dwelling in God's word. So it's just an encouragement to do a lot of those things that you already do, to be aware of God's presence, to do unto others as God has done unto us, and to be spiritually awakened until every moment of your life is giving thanks to God. Let every breath we breathe praise our Lord. Amen.
please join me in the affirmation of faith. How do you live for the love of God? I love because God first loved me. God loves me in Christ with a love that never ends. Amazed by grace, I no longer live for myself. I live for the Lord who died and rose again, triumphant over death for my sake. Therefore, I take those around me to heart, especially those in particular need, knowing that Christ died for them no less than for me. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. Every generous act of giving is itself a gift from God above. As people of faith and action, let us offer our lives to the Lord. Will the ushers please come forward?
You may be seated. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life, he says. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Please join me in the prayer of great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Eternal God, holy and mighty, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, to worship you in every place where your glory abides. You laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They shall perish, but you shall endure. You are always the same, and your years will never end. You made us in your image and called us to be your people, but we turn from you, leaving sin and death to reign. Still, you loved us and sought us, and in Christ, your grace defeated death and opened the way for eternal life. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly choirs and the faithful of every time and place who sing to the glory of your name, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You sent him to be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Listening to him, we learn how to live. Believing in him, we learn how to hope. We glorify you for your great power and love at work in Christ. Friends, let us pray for the needs of our world. Let us pray. Holy God, your spirit dwells in every place that has breath. You give life to all things. You created and ordered the planets and the sun and the moon and the stars. And by your power, hold everything in its place. We give you thanks for the beauty of the earth. Help us to remain good stewards of this earth, of the resources you have given us, of the ways and means for how we live our lives together. Let those of us who have, have a heart of thankfulness and gratitude so that we may share with those who have not. Bless our nation, O Lord. Don't let the divisions among us ever divide us, but help them to propel us forward to be a light upon a hill, to be a nation who looks after the poor and the elderly and the sick and the infirm, a nation who lifts up the creative and the industrious so that they may work and, and share and give and do. Help us as we live in, in new times. We pray for our president, for our leaders, for our troops overseas in harm's way. We ask that you, that you guide them and govern them and give them a sense of your justice in your ways. We give you thanks for this great nation as we celebrate our independence and as we seek to move forward and to be your people. We ask, O oh God, that you be with the isolated and the lonely, the depressed, for the sick. We ask that you work in miracles for those who may be healed, work in them miracles beyond ever whatever they may dream or hope so that your glory may be proclaimed. We pray all of these things in Christ's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night of his arrest, Jesus was with his friends celebrating the Passover meal, and he took one of the loaves of bread, and he said, This bread, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he poured it out and said, This is the cup of the new covenant, my blood shed for the forgiveness of all sins. Drink this in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this cup and you eat this bread, you proclaim my death until I come again in glory. Isn't it a mystery that his body broken can make us whole as a people? And isn't it a mystery that his blood spilled fills us up with the Holy Spirit to show forth his fruits? Friends, this is the feast of God for all the people of God. All are welcome at this table, for Jesus would turn none away. We're going to have communion serve communion by intention today we would ask that if you are in this section and this section that that you come in and uh well halfway here and you will come down the center and flow out that way so just halfway down here uh you don't have to divide your family right you can stay there say, yeah yeah you can go with your dad or your mom pick just pick no <laughs> So uh, this side, you'll come down and merge this way. And if you come down on this side, you'll come down and you'll flow out that way. So that way uh, you can merge politely, right? So use your turn signals. And all, all is ready. Were the servers, please come forward.
the prayer after communion. Oh, oh, I forgot. I told Esther, I said, I didn't want to do a prayer after communion because I wanted you guys to, to sing it. I picked a song, Glory Be to God, because I, it's such a fitting prayer after communion. That's why you don't do things at camp, because um, you can't remember when you're running around with those kids. So let us give thanks and prayer through our singing. To God be the glory. Let us stand and sing. Mark Kimsey, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Marge, you've changed. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Mark. We appreciate it. And, and Wendell lights the candles every week. And so, boy, you know, when you guys aren't here, you all do so much in different ways. And when one of you are missing, something doesn't get done usually. And so Wendell is missing, and he's, he's our candle lighter. But, but thanks for, for all you do and for being the people that you are and for loving God with your whole heart and your whole mind and, and your whole selves. Um, it, go from this place knowing that you too are loved with all that God has to offer, even his only son. Go with the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs>